Hello and welcome back and that is right, it is time for Data News of the Week, the video where we go through all the little dribs and drabs of news that involve data that we can squeeze into any other video. That is right, first story up this week is to do with Seagate and 22 terabyte drives. I don't know about you guys, but I was just getting used to the idea of 20 TB drives and then all of a sudden, boop, appears on the radar that Seagate are working on 22 terabyte drives. They've started sending some of these drives out to some of their private clients and partners there. We're talking predominantly it's going to be hyperscale type stuff. Still built on the um, HAMR um, kind of build um, standard there in terms of compression there and that recording method being utilized on these drives. Very little is known and this is most certainly not a formal announcement. This is stuff that's just kind of floated on a few different websites there but still nonetheless Generally, that means that we're probably going to see these drives before the end of the year in a far more, you know, commercial sense. Almost certainly it's going to be the big, your Exoses and stuff like that, they're going to get there first. Maybe some 22TB NAS drives are arriving on the scene there, but still nonetheless. Seagate kind of normally, generally quite quiet about these things until actual launch. The idea of these 22TBs are popping up on the radar quite early is a very, very good sign, particularly when you've got hardware shortages still reported in terms of you know semiconductors and stuff like that largely people you know the consensus is it's going to be at least another year because of everything from the effects of the pandemic on the supply chain droughts and stuff like that it's still great to see that Seagate are pushing forward on these larger hard drives and carrying on with their roadmap exactly how they wanted to dictate early doors Next up, a brand new SSD. Well, I say brand new. It's kind of a modification of an existing series. That is the Corsair MP600. For those who aren't aware, the uh, MP600 from Corsair was one of the earliest Fizon E18 SSDs available on the market in the you know kind of prosumer gamer sector there. And the M uh, MP600 Pro, that SSD, as good as it was, wasn't great for PlayStation 5 use because the heatsink, as lovely as it was, was massive. And again, we did review it quite a long time ago here on the channel but there's a new version again very specifically targeting playstation 5 users the mp um uh, mp600 pro lpx edition with a much uh, more compact heatsink model there and apparently again we've got one coming into the studio for review but apparently the firmware has been tweaked for that console use so i'm really looking forward to seeing the early benchmark i will say uh, this is the next storage ssc that we talked about on the channel a while ago it's very very similar in design to that not exactly the same but still very very similar to what we're seeing there so hopefully again it's going to be great to compare those against one another it's a fires on ssd it's, you know, I think it's got 176 LAN NAND as well, 3D TLC, uh, presumably Micron, and the usual sort of makeup we're used to at the moment. But it's just that talk about tweaks for PS5 use. I'm going to be interested to see in reality what that pays out towards. Next up, I want to talk about a company called Solidime. This is something that's been bouncing around for quite a while in terms of coverage of a new kind of startup, but a billion dollar startup there. Again, they were acquired by uh, SK Hynix, you know, the memory people, the, NAND, uh, the sorry, the chip people. But what's really intriguing here is there was a recent review over on Blocks and Files. I uh, say review, it was like a Q&A with the brand. Uh, and they were talking a lot about their plans, kind of products they're working towards. And one of their, you know, you know, primary focuses for the early development of their ranges is PLC SSDs, Penta Layer Cell or Five Layer Cell SSDs. Right now, um, the most affordable, high capacity, but arguably lower performance SSD NAND out there is QLC Quad Layer Cell. Um, and although there are a lot of users out there that will not see the point of TL, um, sorry, um, PLC NAND, arguing that you know you're going to have lower durability, you're going to have lower performance, you're going to have that great capacity at a good price point, but the rest of it's going to suck a bit. But there is a place in this market for uh, storage like that that doesn't have to be so rigorous, doesn't have to be so responsive. So they're one of the first brands I've seen be particularly loud about uh, PLC SSD. So again, keep an eye on these guys because I do think this is going to be one of those little underground things that although, you know, mainstream SSD use never really going to care about this sort of thing. I'm willing to bet by the start of next year, we're going to see a lot more bouncing around about these five last sale uh, NAND SSDs. Finally, something that I saw online uh, just under a week ago, uh, uh, another YouTube channel, uh, Developer AKR, uh, has been doing some really fun things with WD NAS. If you're not uh, aware of them, I have linked to the channel in the description. I'm hoping to do some of my own experimentation soon. Um, and it is a full breakdown and a guide and a link to a lot of online assets to install Disk Station Manager DSM from Synology on 
your WD NAS. That's right. If you are someone that has an old WD NAS, particularly some of the ones that now the firmware is no longer supported and they're not going to have online access anymore uh, because WD have you know stopped supporting the firmware on certain legacy older devices. A number of these older devices come to the MyBook Duos. Uh, a lot of the older WD books uh, and WD clouds, these can now be utilized with this unofficial um, tinkering to install Synology software on them. Now, huge disclaimer straight off the bat, once again, on behalf of developer AKR, but also just generally, this isn't going to be stable. It's really not. It's going to be quite, you know, potchy. And again, if you're thinking of getting a Synology, this will be a great way for you to experience that software and decide if you want to utilize Synology. But once again, this is not an official update. It's not supported by WD, not supported by Synology, not supported by stability, and definitely you shouldn't use it for integral data. But still, nonetheless, it's incredibly interesting to see that even these really low power 32-bit IRM um, uh, WDs, in some cases, are able to support this DSM patch over there. So I do strongly recommend you check out this chap's channel. And again, I'm going be experimenting uh, myself with this to see if I can get uh, DSM installed on one of these devices and then walk you guys through how to do it. But this has been Data News of the Week. I hope you found this interesting. We've got some great stuff coming next week about um, new Synology coverage. We're going to be talking a lot about some brand new Seagate drives as well. And we have uh, the True NAS, that's the iX Systems NAS, finally here in the studio. It's absolutely massive, the box it's in, but we're hopefully going to get started on that here on the channel and get a lot more stuff out there for you guys. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to learn more, and I will see you next time.